What's up, guys? We're going to 1650. Welcome back to the rating climb. If you were here last time, you know that we did lose our second game, and so we didn't quite make it to 1625. We have a little bit uh, further to go today. Okay, a King's Gambit. So what I like to do against the King's Gambit is play D5 pretty much every time. This is, in my opinion, the most annoying way um, to play against the King's Gambit. I used to play the King's Gambit, and I never liked playing against D5. So that's what we're going to do here. There's two moves here, C6 and E4. Um, I don't know. Let's play E4. I think this one is pretty annoying because it takes away the square where the knight would like to go to. All right, so attacking my pawn, I'm probably just going to defend that. Um, and also put some pressure on this pawn on d5 as well. And usually black gets a pretty pretty nice game. Kind of equalize pretty quickly. Let me uh, bring up the chat over here. Yeah, Chess Adventures is coming back one day. I just haven't caught up yet. But we, we'll get there eventually. All right, bishop c4, interesting. So he's trying to defend like this. Um, I kind of want to play bishop c5 because, you know, now that the f-pawn is gone, that's a really nice diagonal. Also, normally d4 would just make me lose a move. But in this case, I can always on passant. And it gets me ready to castle. Bishop d6 also makes some sense, I think. But I'm, I'm going to go for this move, I believe. I mean, you could also play like c6 and just turn it into like a gambit. Even bishop g4, it makes some sense. But I think, yeah, I think I really want to do this. And also, getting my king castled right away is going to give me the option to bring the rook over. And once that pawn potentially trades, I mean, white's going to white's gonna have to push this, right, at some point. And when that happens, I want to be ready to bring my rook over here. So I think this is a good move. Queen e2, interesting. Okay, so white is just going for this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to castle. Of course, if white takes, I have a little tactic where I could take and then pin the queen. So I'm actually going to be defending my pawn tactically. There's also bishop g4, which now looks like a nice move as well. So, yeah, very tempting, both of these moves. Hmm. Bishop g4, I guess the queen, the queen's almost trapped. The queen would have to go to f1. So would I rather castle or bishop g4? Wow. I think I want to castle and maybe try to play bishop g4 next move, but I don't know. Bishop g4. Hmm. It's queen f1 is such a weird square for the queen to be on. That's really tempting me. Then we castle. If the bishop gets attacked, we'd probably just retreat or something. I think at that point we're ready to start sacrificing stuff and attacking the king. All right, maybe I will go for this. I don't know. Both of those moves seemed really good. I actually wasn't sure which one was the best. So we'll, we'll go with this one. Just gaining tempo on the queen. And if you look carefully, it doesn't have a lot of places to go. Look at all these squares are covered, right? So looks like queen f1 is forced here. I say that, I mean, I guess knight f3 because it's pinned, but that just doesn't seem like it could be good for white. And we would castle and we would still have the pressure there. So yeah, I think queen f1 is forced. He's trying to use the jump spell right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. So yeah, let's just say queen f1. I'm pretty sure we're just going to castle. That seems like a very logical move. And that way, whenever this deep pawn comes forward, we're ready with the rook. I don't think we even need to think about anything else. Just nothing else is jumping out at me. It's going to be as good as castling. So now we're ready to go. King is very safe. And on h3, we will have a decision. Yeah. I'm tempted to go here and allow my bishop to get trapped with the idea that white's king is going to be totally in trouble if that happens. Now, is that true? I don't know. I could also just maybe go back. I guess I could go back here and after g4, then go back here. If I don't lose the bishop, but I still kind of create all the weaknesses. 
on uh, White's King. The other way to do it is... What's the other way to do it? I mean, I'm thinking about even just crazy stuff like E3. Just, just trying to get to the king, right? Before White has a chance to, to get away. Um, all right, let's... So here's the thing. If I if I go to one of these squares and I allow G4, yes, it's it's creating some weaknesses on the king side, but it's also allowing white to kind of attack me at the same time. Do I really want to do that? I don't actually know. Don't actually know. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, let's go bishop f5, and we'll see what white wants to do. I have options if they play g4 uh, of potentially sacrificing or just going back and saying, okay, I induced some pawn weaknesses, you know, look at the king side, and then maybe I just go back here. That wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. Even going here, allowing it to get trapped, playing something like c6, maybe that's a bit too ambitious. Maybe it's just a little bit too much. I just, I really just feel like this is the move. I don't know why. I just feel like I got to do it. If the knight takes, what do we do? We have this followed by probably f5. Looks pretty solid. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my, my instincts here. And just basically what I'm saying is my king is safer than white's king. I'm going to go try to checkmate white. And I could be wrong. And this maybe this doesn't work out. But I'm feeling like this is the moment to do it. Ooh, queen h3. That's a pretty good move, actually. I didn't think about that. Because it hits this and checkmate. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess we have to play something like this, which I didn't really want to do. Okay, well, missed that one. That was a good move. It's actually a good move. But still, I still feel like White's King is very close to being attacked. We just got to figure out how to do it. Do I know Eric Rosen? No, I mean not personally. I mean I know his I know he's on YouTube. I've seen some videos, but I don't like I'm not friends with him. Okay, knight to e2. Uh, let's see. I mean, c6, or just try to bring this knight into the game somehow. Hmm. Yeah, queen h3 was a really good move. That, that was, like, just very nice for white. They have the pressure here. Kind of missed that. I might just be trying to take this pawn now. Okay, let's play rookie, rookie eight, I guess. We defend this, but we also are thinking ahead. If this ever moves, this is where I want my rook to be. So that's kind of what's going on here. Queen d7? Uh, yeah, I can play queen d7, but the problem with trading is I sacrificed a piece. If I trade queens... Yeah, I'm probably not going to be better in the end game. Uh, what I'm trying to do is take advantage of, of White's king being stuck in the center. White can't easily castle. It's going to take them at least two moves, probably more than that, because I'm going to be capturing if they ever move this pawn. So that's what I'm trying to play off of, the fact that I can attack the king here. Knight to a4, very weird move. 
I mean, yes, it has a threat, but usually when you put your knight on the, the rim like that, it's not really a great place. Uh, the obvious move is just, just retreat, and then the knight is just kind of sitting over there. Could also play knight here to defend it this way. Yeah, I think we will just go back. Keeping an eye out for tactics. I don't really have anything immediately. It would just be the, the trade that we already talked about. I can't play b5 just yet. Probably knight to d7. Maybe jump the knight over here. Something like this looks, looks pretty good. Maybe queen e7. Getting ready for if this pawn pushes to put more pressure here. These are kind of the things I'm thinking of. Yeah, Jared. Welcome. You made it. He goes back. Just casually goes back. Interesting. Okay, so uh, let's just, I guess, continue developing here. Um, almost like I got that move for free. Now, I did have to retreat the bishop, but this is still a decent score for the bishop, so I don't know that white really... Seems like white doesn't really know how to Proceed. All right. Yeah, I think we got to take this. We want this open. Uh, okay, that's fine. And I think we're going to jump in this way now. Put some pressure on the bishop like that. Okay, maybe queen e7. Starting to feel like there should be some tactics popping up pretty soon. Queen e7, queen f6. Uh, what else can we do? Yeah, we got to get this rook probably to d8. What I don't want to let happen, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to force this, but I don't want to allow white to play like bishop d2 in castles. Because once they get castled, and that other rook comes over, I'm probably just dead lost. So I think this is the moment very soon here to make something happen. Ah, f5. Let's go ahead and get rid of that bishop. Now it frees us up, we can actually do something here if we want, I think. Hmm, yeah, okay. What happens if I go here? That's what I'm wondering. Queen could go back, which is a pretty annoying move yet again. How do we do how what do we do here? I don't actually know, guys. Queen F six. Queen E seven. Do I want to allow that? Hmm. Queen h3, and I'm trying to see... Knight to f6, there's going to be bishop g5. It doesn't look very good for me. The other thing I can do is move the knight somewhere, allow this. I can escape. I don't really love that, but I could escape. I also play h5, allow the capture, then the bishop jumps in. That actually might be my best chance. Yeah, that's a tricky move, actually. That's a very tricky move. The white's probably going to grab the pawn. Bishop g3. Ah, uh, but king f1. Let's see what's happening here. King f1 actually is a good move. Hmm. Check. Takes, takes. Okay, he goes there. That's That's a mistake. Now we can get the rook. So finally, we caught a break. Uh, I think white was playing very good, but that looks like a mistake to me. Now we can get the rook. Okay. So that's good. Gotta save the bishop. We're not out of this yet. If 
That was the threat. So we've got the rook for the two pieces, the two knights. Yeah, pawns are even. But white's king is a bit, you know, not on the ideal square, I don't think. Let's go in a second. How about this? What I'm trying to do is force the king to go back before the rook can come out. Because that's going to be annoying for white, and then the rook's basically out of the game. So that's what's going on here. Now, if white wants to go here, that doesn't look good because the rook's coming over. Yeah, he does step back. Let's go ahead and do this anyway. Now it's feeling pretty nice. All of our pieces are looking pretty active. And white's rook is in trouble over here. We have a pin here, which is nice. Pin here. Trying to see if there's any tactics. Um, okay. Take, 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 check. What's the follow-up? I don't know if that's good enough. It might be. It might be. I do want to simplify because I'm lower on time. So I think I'm going to go for this line. Could even... I'm going to do it because I'm going to get these two pawns. So I think that's going to be a, a good enough end game for me. Could have been a mistake. Because I had the king positioned the way that I did, this might have been a mistake, but... Um, still looks pretty, pretty good for me, I think. I'm trying to, to somehow trap this knight, maybe, actually. If I can go here, where's the knight gonna go? Oh, I guess he can do that. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Very interesting. I guess we gotta push these pawns. I don't know what else to do. We gotta push them. We gotta push the pawns. And... Probably it's gonna be hard for white to stop that. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're okay on time. Because it's, it's an easier position to play now. It's easier to pre-move some stuff here and play pretty quickly. Just gotta watch out for forks and pins and... That kind of stuff. So I might actually try to trade some more here. Coming down here, we could also play f6 to kind of defend this if we need to. King can probably tuck in here nicely. Let's go back, attack the bishop. I'm gonna come here. And, oh, that was a tricky move, but we, we dodged a fork there. This is what he was going for. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and trade the rooks. I want to simplify this a little bit. Because when you have two rooks, both of them can be captured. Now I only have one to worry about, so it's easier to, to do this. All right, let's let's go. We gotta push these guys. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. Mm, I think we can give that up. I think ours is gonna be faster. And yeah, there we go. There we go. We can get a queen here. All right, that should be that should be good enough. Still a little tricky, but I think we're going to be okay now. Only knight to c5. Yeah, let's go. Hmm. I want to be careful here. I don't want to get forked. Okay, we got it. We got it now. All right. Tough game though. Very tough game.
I guess we can allow that. Good game to our opponent. Very well played. And yeah, kind of got lucky there. Uh, well, let's look at the game first. Look at the game first, then we'll talk about it. All right, we're at 180. Very well played by our opponent, I would say. Um, okay. So yeah, I felt like we were doing very well here. Engine did want castling. And yeah, in hindsight, I, I underestimated how strong this idea was going to be. H3, G4. I just underestimated that. So that's why castling was such a better move, right? Bishop, G4 was still the second move, though. Yeah, again, again, underestimating this. And the engine is saying, I shouldn't mess around with that. I need to just go back, uh, which I, I didn't quite understand. Yeah, wasn't a good idea, which we kind of saw that. Totally missed this move. Very, very good move by our opponent. Threatening the checkmate, threatening the knight. Didn't give me a lot of options, right? Um, and so here we go. At this point, I was kind of just hoping that my opponent was going to make a mistake, which they didn't until right here. Got him with this little move. Now, I think if they just play king f1 here, I don't know what I was going to do, actually, because now I'm in trouble, because I have one piece hanging, two pieces hanging, and a checkmate threat. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I guess I have to play knight h2, but this is not good for me. This is not good for me at all. But, Onan made a mistake here and played king to d1. And, I mean, this just kind of shows you guys, like, this, this 1500 rated player played a really great game, and you have this one moment where they make the wrong move. That's the kind of stuff that, you know, keeps you at 1,500. That being said, our opponent is a very good player, right? But these, these little mistakes are what keep you from getting to the next level. So, and of course, I'm not perfect myself, so I don't think that's what I'm saying. All right, so we got the fork, and then it was, yeah, I think we, we kind of, okay, wow, those are most of the best moves. Okay, interesting. All right, and then basically I just won the race, sacrificed to get the queen, and that was basically it. Okay, good game to our opponent. All right, I'm going to play one more. Um, I'm just going to stretch my legs really fast. Fortunately, I don't have any puzzles for you guys tonight. Um, I didn't plan ahead. All right, new game here. All right, let's play e4. 1677. Sicilian, all right, let's play knight f3. We'll just go for the bishop b5 lines. A6, all right, so we're going to take that. That's why we go there, and we're going to play D4. Now, there's kind of two ways you can play this. You can play D3, which is more of a closed-off way, or D4 is a little bit more aggressive. You get more space. I can play both, but I like to just get the queen on D4 right away. And normally, you don't want your queen here because the knight's going to hit it and make you waste time. But in this case, there's no knight. So my queen on d4 actually controls a lot of stuff. I'm going to play e5 here. And what I'm trying to do is create a backward pawn on d7, which is very annoying for, for black. Now, if they really want, they can play d d5. But then they have to, yeah, they have to give me on passant, which creates two isolated pawns, so long-term weaknesses. So I think I'm going to just snap that off. Let's do it. 
these guys. Those are those are targets. So if we go into an end game, probably I'm going to be able to put some serious pressure on those. Whereas you compare my pawns, everything looks nice and pretty. Okay, so I could take that. Um, I think what I'm going to do instead, though, is see if Black will trade into me. So let's just go ahead. We already have it defended. So if Black trades to me, I I, I don't want to like develop this bishop for Black. Is what I'm trying to avoid, right? So he can take me if he really wants to trade. Um, if not, I'll just wait, probably play bishop f4 and maybe force the issue. h6, wow, okay, very slow move. I don't think that's good for black, too slow. Um, because we're about to have all of our pieces out, get castled, and then it's, and then, I mean, black is still trying to develop here, right? So, bishop f4 seems very good. There's no fork because we have enough pieces to just take it. Uh, if this and this, there's still no fork, we can still take it. Everything looks good. Bishop to f4 it is. And even if the queens are off the board, it's going to get very dangerous. Ah, queen to d5. I guess that was a mouse slip. That's unfortunate. I guess they were trying to take. Well, sorry to our opponent. If there was takebacks, I would do it, but I don't, he doesn't, uh, there's not that option. So that's unfortunate. We're not going to get to see how that played out. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think we were already doing pretty well, to be honest with you guys. Okay, 90-73. And let's just see real quick here. Should have four is a mistake. What was, what was the engine wanting? Queen a4? Oh, interesting. It didn't want to trade queens. Okay, whatever. Let's just say black was going to take this. I was going to take back. They are probably going to do something like knight f6. And I guess you can't take that right away because of this. So maybe you... No, I was going to castle this way, I think. Let's just say bishop e7. I don't know. Something... Well, now I can't take it. So they would probably have to play, like, let's just say bishop here. And I don't know. This looks very good for me. I mean, I can even go here or I can start doubling up. Uh, maybe jump this knight around. Put pressure like this. Lots of Lots of ways to play this. And black is still trying to catch up. So yeah, I think we were doing okay. All right, let me update this, 181, and let's play a new, new game. No need to spend a lot of time on that one. All right, 1700 playing B3. All right, what do we play against B3? Uh, I think I saw, I think I saw an opening D5, Bishop G4. Oh, he's going to play D5. I don't know what's happening. Never mind. Forget what, forget everything I just said. This is just weird. So now we have a queen's pawn game, except white's played b3. Okay. Um, I'm just going to develop my knight. I don't, I mean, basically what I'm thinking is there might be some weaknesses here. Because normally you could play c3, but you might have a hard time doing that. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, basically. Let's go ahead and develop the bishop. Probably e6, just... Just normal stuff here. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. I don't want to overthink this. Let's jump the knight in. And like I mentioned, maybe we can get some, some tricks here along these dark squares if if white is not careful. Like now, can I go here? Start to take advantage of this. Why not? Can't play c3 or you lose a pawn. You can't take me. You can play a3. That's a move. That is a move. But I want to jump in. Bum, bum, bum. If I go back before I go back, maybe I don't want to go back. Yeah, let's let's go in here, I guess. I don't know. Looks like it's just going to be a trade, which is fine, I think. And I think I'm going to go ahead and castle. I think that's where I want my king to be. All right. Um, knight has a way to get out, so I'm not worried about that. Could also play like c6 to give the queen some options to come over here. Chip d3. I can go back. Pretty happy with that, I think. Let's go ahead and castle. Very weird, weird opening here. 
funky looking position. So here I have to be careful. If I take, I like the pawn structure, but then my knight's under attack. I could jump back, and then I could jump over here. So it looks like my knight is not getting trapped. Do I like the pawn structure enough to make that trade? The other option is I jump here. White's probably going to take. I'm going to take. Yeah, I don't know that I like that as much. Although, opening up the C file does give white some pressure there that they don't have currently. So, hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. Maybe I'll just leave it, actually. If, if, I think I am. I think I am going to do that. I'm going to leave it only because I don't want to open up this. And if white takes me, yes, I'm going to get some double pawns. But I'm also going to get a clamp here. And I can maybe even use this to attack. So it's it's one of those... It's a trade-off. Something not great, but something kind of good. I'm going to bet that maybe it's better for me this way. So that was the, the logic there. Okay, so they're going for the knight. Now I do have to deal with this. Probably we just jump back here. Could come over here too, but uh, this is a nice centralized square. I think that makes a lot of sense. And if they take me, then I can undouble my pawns and carry on with the game. Okay. So... So, 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 let's go here. White can't go here right now because they lose the knight. Now they could trade and then try to go there. But I always have f6 if I want it to chase that knight away. So that's a nice thing about the position. c4. Okay. I'm thinking just c6 just to defend that. Also gives my queen options to come over here, which is usually a good thing. A lot of times the queen can... Find a nice square over there. And I can really take either way. Now, if I take this way, that's going to be a long-term weak pawn, isolated pawn. I'm thinking of taking with the knight. I'm also thinking about f4, just sacrificing a pawn to try to open up things over here. But I don't know if it's the right moment for that. Maybe queen a5 puts pressure on the knight, clears the way for my rooks to come to the center. Let me go ahead and start with rook to e8, because I'm pretty sure that's where I want this rook to go. I'm still wondering about these guys. So a lot of times if you're not sure what to do, you can start with the move that you're, you're pretty confident you're going to play. Okay, so we can take that. The queen would defend, but then we can jump in. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Gain a tempo there. Okay. Now, like I said, if I want to kick this knight away, we have f6. Or I can even think about bringing the queen over here and maybe the rook up and over. That Ooh, that looks it's kind of cool. It's probably going to play f3 to chase my knight away. Very high probability that's coming next. I could play queen g5 to prevent that. That's one way to do it. I might run into f4. But then again, we could jump the queen over here and we still have this threat of building an attack. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's maybe makes some sense. Also take this. But why? Because if I don't, then this is going to happen. So it's a question of, um, do I want to go for a kingside attack? Do I want to just focus on what's happening in the center? Do I want to focus on the queen side? I don't actually know. I mean, let's say I go here. Takes, takes. Queen's coming in. What am I going to do? Don't really like the way that looks, honestly. Don't really like it. Queen to a5. Puts pressure here. You can always take this way. If I take the queen, oh, the queen could take. I was going to say no, but it could because of this. Wow. All right. 
Very interesting position. Also f4. What's the point of f4? Well, after takes, then we have ideas of this. Getting very tricky. Wow, okay. F3, this is going to be a problem. Okay, I don't know what to do, guys. I really don't know what to do. I, th I don't think I want to leave the knight sit there. I just don't think I do. So I'm going to play F6. Honestly, I'm not really feeling this position. Not really feeling it. Okay. Let's go over here. I want to get the rook to this D file. Backing this. Uh, but if white takes here, I'll, I probably will take with the queen. Only because it just looks dangerous opening this up for, for white to in, invade. So I think I want to prevent that. Okay, no tactics. Um, probably we can bring this rook over. G5 even is a move, gaining some space over here, creating some attacking chances, or G6 to defend this guy. Let's start with the rook. I'm pretty sure I want my rook to be here. Got to keep an eye on this diagonal. B4, okay. Here's an idea. I want the queen to go this way. I don't think so. I'm going to go here. I want the queen to be able to come to the king side. I might try to play g5 and bring the queen over. Okay, of course we have to take with the rook. Only move because of the pin. That's why we went there anyway. Okay, yeah, we got to be careful. Let's go ahead. We get out of the pin this way. We get out of the pin this way. G5. There's a fork here if we can chase the knight away. Triple fork, let's go. So now this is a big threat because of this. White has to deal with that. So I want to play here. I'm thinking about bringing the queen over. Okay, interesting move. Um, if I attack the knight, if he takes... I could just take back, and I'm still winning the, the material. So I think that's a mistake. Let's go here. It seems like white's trying to flag me, which is which is a big mistake. I still have a lot of time. That's a big mistake. So, okay, the knight's going to move. Yep, there you go. Not really worried about that. Here we go. Triple fork. Very nice. White is in trouble. We're just winning some some easy material. Also, this knight is kind of trapped. I'm going to take this one. Trying to lure the rook away. Okay, the king takes. That's fine. We have queen here. There's g3, but the knight is basically totally out of the game. Oh, I could also just take here. That's just even easier. That's just even easier. Yeah. White's in trouble now because they have to go back to E1. It allows me to trade everything off. Throwing in this check to force the king out of the out of the game. Not sure if I want to trade that right now or not. The only thing is what's happening here. Maybe we play f4, taking advantage of the pin here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go f4. Got to be a little careful if the knight comes in, but... Um... Okay, there we go. We stopped that problem. I was afraid the knight was going to come in and I was going to have to start worrying about all this kind of stuff. Take or push? 
let's push. I'm I'm thinking about checkmating the king somehow. Oh. Or it's just trying to flag me. Okay, GG. Alright, how do we do this? Where's the checkmate at? Let's come here, I guess. Stopping the checks along the diagonal. Also, this is not an option because we have checkmate right here. The white has to deal with the checkmate threats. And then probably the easiest thing to do is just get the rook into the game. Oh, there's probably even a tactic here. Look at that. Takes, takes. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I wonder if I should do it right now, actually. That's a pretty good one. You have checkmate on g2. Back the king goes there. Queen here. Is that a forced mate though? Yeah, maybe that's even easier. I think it is. Why oh, can't stop the checkmate here? All they can do is do one check, but then I hide over here and the game is over. Actually, they can't go there. They have to go to b3. b3. I just move. And then I have checkmate. Mm-hmm. Okay, good game to our opponent. Check the game review. Update this. Ooh. 96. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting 96 in that game. Because I didn't know what was happening in the opening. Usually when I don't know what's happening, I don't play that well. Very interesting. You want the eval bar on? Is that better? Didn't like F6. Saw the tactic. Saw that. We saw, yeah. Okay, it's a pretty well played game. Um, I didn't realize that. I think we could have also played, what was the other move I was going to play? Yeah, Rook takes E3. Let me see, which one was actually the better one? Yeah, that's pretty good too. Yep. Also a very, very strong move. Can't take because of this. All right, I'm going to stretch my legs. I'll be back in like two minutes.
All right, guys. Here we go. Get up and stretch your legs if you haven't. It's healthy. It's good for you. Don't sit for multiple hours without moving your legs. Trust me. All right. Let me read some chat here. Um... Great streams, Nelson. They really do help my game. Cool. Antoine, thank you. Appreciate the super chat. I'm glad it's helpful. Thank you. Stretch your legs when you go get food. Awesome. That works. Drink lots of water. Have to go to the bathroom. That's another strategy. Kind of forces you to get up and go every so often. Do a poll to gauge people's ELO. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll do it right now. Um, we'll do this. We will do this. We will do this. How many options can I do? Can I do five? Oh, just four? Okay. Let me actually change this then. Do this. All right, guys, what's your rating? Ready? Go. There's the poll. I'm going to guess most people are between 1,000 and 1,500. That's my guess. Bam. Nope, it's not. Wait, was it? yeah, it is. It is. I thought I saw 600 to 1,000 for a second. Yep. Most people are like 12 to 1,400. Yeah, it's pretty close though. Six hundred to a thousand. Okay, I wasn't expect. Wow, I was not expecting that. All right, so six hundred to fifteen hundred. Okay. Well, there you have it. Hundred and fifty votes. Thirty, sixty, you say well, like seventy-five percent of everybody is between six hundred and fifteen hundred. Okay, all right, let's play another game. We are, we are getting close. Sixteen thirty-eight. We're going for. Oh, let me go back to the the normal one here. Okay, here we go. Knight to f three. We're going to play knight to c six. Ah, this one, this one, pretty boring. I do this. What can we do to mix it up a little bit? I think bishop b4 maybe. I don't really know this theory though, so we'll see. D4, wow. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like a logical move, I guess. What happens if I play knight f6? Can I get away with that? D5. Just taking. Yeah, maybe just taking. Let's go ahead and take it. Most most of the time, when somebody plays d4, usually you want to take it. There are some exceptions, but usually you want to take it. So like right now, I could take this and just mess up the pawn structure. Now, is it worth it? It's good long term. Short term, I have to deal with the bishop pair. But um, I, think I'll, I think I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll take it. And then just maybe knight to f6, get the knight out right away. Got this covered with knight e5. Notice the long-term weaknesses here. Bishop g5 kind of expected that one. So how do we get out of this jam? Probably h6, g5. It's a bit aggressive. But otherwise, this is going to be a very annoying pin that I don't want to deal with. So I'm going to go for this. I'm going to go for this. Oh, he's going to take it. Okay, well, that makes my life easy. I just take with the queen. Of course, I don't want to take this way. Opens up my king side, messes up my pawn structure, right? And now we've got out of the pin. We don't have to do with the bishop pair. It's just a bishop and knight against bishop and knight. I feel like I'm already probably better because of the pawn structure weaknesses. These are long-term things that they are just easier to attack. Look at my pawns, right? So I don't want to do this. Because that just fixes everything for white. I'm going to allow white to take me. And that's totally fine. So probably we just castle. The only thing I'm thinking is. Does this do anything? Sort of is a threat. But. 
I think white can... Is it a threat? I'm trying... So, like, if white castles, well, then I take here and I, I win. So, if they take, then I take here. They sack it with check, and then they go here. Or queen f3. It's... Yeah, I guess it's just a trade. So that's definitely a move, uh, but I think I'm just going to castle. Yeah, I'm just going to castle, but maybe queen g5 was was a good move. I'm just not sure. Whatever happened to the chess quiz series? Yeah, that's a good question. It it just got to be a lot of work because I have I had to create create them every time. Then I had to, you know, go in and get all the data put it in my spreadsheets, do a bunch of stuff on, on the back end. And then even editing the videos was just was a lot of work. But maybe one day we'll bring that back. Okay, so obviously my opponent is expecting this, but what I'm thinking is an in-between move with a check. Very annoying move because if you do this, you lose the rook again with a check. So you would have to play king here, which is obviously not what white wants to do. So that's a very powerful move. My opponent missed a king to e2, and then uh, now I recapture, except white's king is in trouble. So, big, big, okay, yeah, that's a move too, but same thing, basically. And now we take here. The question is which way, because this also looks appealing, but I think I'm just going to go this way, because that way it opens up this for the rook. Looks a little bit more powerful to me. Nuts. See you later, man. Take it easy. Okay. So here we go. Bishop g4 is a move because of the rook. But f3 is also a move, and then I have to move, which you could argue that that induces some weaknesses. But I don't know how much, so I think I'm just going to go here. Clearing the way for this guy, this guy. Bada bing, bada boom. I could even go here if I want, but I'm going to go ahead and start out with a pin. And now this seems like a much more powerful move. Why not kick with pawn to a6? Um, not sure w at what moment you, you're talking about, because I didn't really have time to do that. Because um, I had to recapture the knight, which also chased the bishop away. So... Yeah, now I think we can do it. Bishop bishop here, and, and white has some problems with the bishop. Because you've got the pin, and I have three pieces attacking it, only two defending it. I'm threatening to just win a pawn, and I don't know how white's going to... Maybe try to use the king. It's the only thing that I can see. The only thing I can see. Yeah, that doesn't quite cut it. Let's just do a quick check. I think we just take. We win another pawn. And you saw, you saw right, the weaknesses and how easy it was to capture those pawns. It's much more difficult for white to take my pawns because simple matter of, of pawn structure differences, right? So trading is good for me. So I'm tempted to take with the queen. But this is also good for me because then I have threats of like going here and check and all kinds of cool stuff. I think I will take with the rook, but both look very good. This is an immediate threat. Okay, he's going to try to run. Um, interesting. We could still go there. We could also bring this rook over. Or we could go check here. Check here I like. Just brings the queen closer to the king, but I could also save that for later. Let me, let me actually start with this move. Keeping this one in my back pocket adding a defender here, and I'm expecting if white does something like this, yeah, exactly. Now I can go here, and feeling like everything is coming together for me now. King can't go back, we have a pin. You can't push this, it's pinned. But what do you have to do? Here, or here, or here? Uh-huh, so I can go check with the queen. I can even bring, let's see, I can even go, well, I can even go back there attack this way. Let's start with a check. I think we can set this up nicely. Yeah, I think we can set this up nicely. Check. And what I'm doing is getting ready now to go here. And bam, we have basically 
checkmate. Okay, queen f1 defends, but still white white is hanging on by a thread at this point. And of course, we have the extra pawns. If we have to trade, we're going to win the end game. So, so queen f1 only move because you have to defend this. And then how do we finish off the game? That's the big question. If this pawn wasn't pushed up, I could bring the rook up and over and it would be easy. That's what I want to do. But I can't because the pawn's there. So... Um, hmm. Uh, okay, I could still I could still do it though. Okay, I'm going to still go here. What I'm going to do instead is go check. Well, I was going to go check and then bring the rook to g6. But white stopped that. I guess we can play h5 and just open up the king that way. Don't really see another way to get through. I mean, this is also a weakness, so we could do that. But I think h5 maybe is the easiest thing. Yeah. Well, because once we get rid of this pawn, then the rook can go to h6. And white's king is really in trouble at that point. White's doing a pretty nice job of, of defending. I will say that. They're holding on pretty well right now. Thanks, James. Thanks, Juan. Yeah, the gout, it's it's a slow uh, process right now. All right, so yeah, I think we want to take this. Yes, the rook can come up and attack some stuff, but look at white's king. There's There's got to be a tactic here. 100% has to be, so I just have to find what it is. This move, I don't really see checkmate. This move would be checkmate there, but then the, the rook would block. This way gives me an option to do this, which I don't know if I want that necessarily. Oh, there's also this tactic. Okay, that's that's the uh, easy way. All right. I didn't see that at first, but on second glance, we take here. Then we the queen comes in, and again, we keep attacking. That's the way to do it. But the king can't go here. That's checkmate immediately. Have to do this. This is the tactic I was just mentioning. And it's also a winning endgame. So like here, I'd probably... No, I wouldn't trade because we have this move. Yeah, there's, there's too many. there's too many tactics. Too many. Okay, let's bring the rook over, and white has no moves except to give up the queen. Okay, good game to our opponent. They defended well, but uh, kind of got off to a rough start and just couldn't come back from it. Yeah, 90, pretty, pretty well played game there. And let's see. So interesting here. Even though I created those long-term weaknesses, the engine says it wasn't worth it. And it, it has to do, like I mentioned, with the bishop pair. So let's see what the engine said white should have played. Bishop to d3. I was probably going to castle. Castle. I was probably going to play a move like d6. Then bishop here. And basically... Stockfish is just saying, look, yes, you have these, but I'm going to use the bishop pair. I'm going to use my pawns. I'm going to get control of the center, play aggressive. And it says white's slightly better. So that's what should have happened. Now, our opponent did this, traded, and as soon as they trade, now it's equal. And then that was the blunder because of the in-between move. Yeah. And that was basically it. Now White's in huge trouble. Because if you can't castle, this rook is basically never going to get into the game. And it's just so easy for me to play this. I just bring the rooks over, pile up, you know, and White's just, just trying to hold on at that point, right? Okay. 1646. One more game should put us over 1650. Here we go. Here we go. SP. Thanks. Take it easy. Um, 
e3. Weird move. Let's see what, what is our opponent up to here. g3. Weird move. I'm just going to get the center. Okay. I'm just going to develop. Try to see what... what wow. Wow. All right. So what I'm noticing is this square. I want to play e e4 here. Now they could still do this. I don't quite have time to make them pay for that. But I still think I'm going to play e4. And if they give me one more move, it's all over. Okay, yeah, now it's... There's got to be something very good for me here. Is a question of is it bishop to g4 or is it knight to e5? And and how do I know it's going to be one of these two moves? Look at these light squares. Look at this. When you play the moves like this, you create weaknesses. And I'm trying to take advantage of those. Okay? So here, that's a very powerful move. That could be a very powerful move. Bishop g4 could be a powerful move because it pins that. The only thing about bishop g4 is there's h3. If I go back, g4 is going to happen and then the knight's going to jump out. So here, I'd ha probably have to play bishop f3, but then takes takes, the knight's going to move, and I might lose my pawn. So with that in mind, I think knight to e5 is the way to go. And keep in mind, if d4 ever happens, I have on passant, I also have knight to d3 with check. Okay, so white avoids that, but here we go. Now, bishop g4 is much more powerful. Because on h3, look at this f3 square. Bishop's coming in, maybe the knight's coming in. I mean, I can also jump over here if I want. But I think bishop g4 is going to be the move. Let's just make sure f3 doesn't work. One, two, three. I have too many pieces. Yeah, I think white's already in trouble because of this poor opening choice. So, of course, they want me to go back so they can do this and, and un unravel. I can throw in a check. Force the king to here, queen to d7, takes, takes. Why do I want to sacrifice my my piece? Well, because then I would have a checkmate idea. However, knight to f4 would stop my plan. But I would have g5. Hmm. So it's getting a little bit tricky. Uh, the other option, to sort of simplify things, is I just play bishop f3 right now which also looks very good, keeps the pin. And the only way white's trading that is if they take here, but then, I mean, that's also very good for me. So rather than complicate the messiness of sacrificing a piece, I think I will just play bishop f3. Okay. Um, wow, that's like so many moves that I want to play at the same time. I, I want to go knight d3 and make the rook go back. I want to like just push this pawn and start busting open the king side. I want to play queen d7 to put more pressure on the light squares. I want to play queen f6 so that I can take and maybe come in with the queen. I want to just develop my knight. I want to play bishop d6. So the tricky part about chess is prioritizing, finding the best way to do it. I mean, how, how is white going to develop? They, they can't really do this. I have on Passant. So they can't move that. They can move this guy, but I'll probably just take it. So h5 actually does seem like a pretty nice move because I want to eventually threaten something like this to get the rook involved. Queen d7 also, because then I can castle and I have more pressure here. Bringing out the knight, you can't go wrong with a developing move like that.
Oh, man. All right. I'm going to play h5. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Okay. Queen a4. I'm not really concerned. Oh, it does get out of the pin. So that's one thing. That is one thing. I didn't think about that. I should have thought about that. That's okay. I'm gonna play c6. Just keeping everything nice and protected. White can move the knight. Yes. But now what we're gonna do is probably just take this. And I want to play h4, but then g4. I'm not quite ready to sacrifice. So what I'm going to do is go here. And then I'm going to play h4. And on g4, I'm, I'm going to take that in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Ooh, f4? What? En passant, buddy. All right, yeah, we got to en passant this. We have to. I guess we could go here too, but that doesn't do as much. We got we to gotta take that. We're coming for the king now. We are coming for the king. Yes, we are. Okay, let's go queen to d7. Look at this. Look at this. I'm getting ready to castle. Okay, they defend that. But now h4. Ah, it's defended by the queen. That's clever, isn't it? All right, but that's okay. There's still so many weaknesses over here. It's just a question of how can we best take advantage of them. Um, could even just go for that line. Check. The king moves here. Here we've got the bishop, so it would have to go like f two. Mm, maybe I want my bishop to be on d six when all that stuff happens. So yeah, let's let's go ahead. We're setting up for this move, and I think White's king's about to be in big trouble. I think white's king's about to be in big trouble. Knight to e4 looks like a great move. Now the queen is shut off. Yeah, now the queen is shut off. So now's the time. h4. g4 is not an option because we sack. Queen comes in. I can guarantee you there will be a checkmate, even though I don't see it. Uh, I can just tell you there will be. But what's white going to do? e4, trying to create counter. No, all right. I'm doing it. I'm not even going to think. The, the reason I can tell you is because look at all of White's pieces. They're all not positioned to stop the queen and the pawn and the bishop. Yeah, White probably makes a good choice by not even taking it. Um. Okay. So what do we do now? Bishop g3 looks pretty good. Just cast. I think just castling maybe. What's castle? And e4, okay. Yeah, I don't really want this to happen because then I, my bishop is stuck out of the game. So I think I am going to take this moment to gain a tempo here. Ooh, knight to f2 unleashes this threat. Very dangerous. Yeah, white could sack that. Dun, 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 dun. Should actually be a good trade for white. Although I would have this at the end. And I still feel pretty good about my position. I have to I have to hurry up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Normally I wouldn't let the rook trade for the two pieces. But in this case, um I'm gonna do it. Oh. That was a blunder. White needed to take that. They didn't do it. And now I guess we just have checkmate. King goes there, that's checkmate. If the king goes here, where's the checkmate? Probably here and h3. Yeah, that's it. Good game to our opponent. Um, the opening was really not good, and we I think we did a good job of taking advantage of that. I guess they decided they don't want to finish this game. Update wins. Did I miss a win? 
Somebody tell me, did I miss, did I not update the last one? But did, maybe I didn't. I don't remember. You guys can tell me. Did I miss a win or did I, did I update it? I did not update. So I missed one, so it should be 183 right now. Is that right? I didn't update it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. So it's 183. It'll be 184 as soon as... Uh, in six minutes. Six minutes and 45 seconds, I guess. He's messing with this rice cooker. Yes. Night B5 incoming. Bam. How's my health holding up? Um... Pretty good, Daniel. It's kind of like a, it's like this, but slowly going in an uptrend. So I have like good days and then I have a bad day and I have moments where I'm like, feel like I'm almost normal and then moments where I have like zero energy and it's just this wave. It's really weird. Um, but overall, I, I feel like it's, it's an uptrend. So yeah, thanks for asking. Like, I still have these, like, random pains, like, just in my legs and in my ankles, and it, it's sort of, like, it's not, like, consistent, you know? Like, a lot of times you injure yourself, and it just kind of always hurts, and it's a linear thing where every day just gets a little better, but the, mine's just, like, weird. It's like, why, why am I feeling pain now, and then it just goes away? So, I don't know what exactly that's, that's all about, but the general trend is improving. Is gout curable? Good question. Kind of. Kind of, yes. There's medicine that you can take that's pretty good at controlling it. There's also a lot of people have good experience with uh, diet changes. And so that's what I'm going to try first, see if we can do it with diet. And if it doesn't work, then I may at some point in the future have to get on medicine. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm very hopeful that the uh, the diet changes will work. Um, all right. We didn't have to wait the full time, so that's that's the good news. 1654. All right. Let's go 184. Let me update this before I forget again. Game review. Let's see. What do we have here? Let's see if we did handle it appropriately. Ooh, 60. What? 69.8? I could have... I was I would be willing to bet money that that was higher than that. Wow. Okay. So let's let's actually see. Let me go to eval bar here. What did we not do correctly? We got the center. It didn't like e4. Okay. Bishop g4. Yes. Didn't like, but we missed something here. It won't. It wanted me to play this probably. Yep. That's what it wanted. And then what? Oh. Okay, stockfish. I see what you're doing. Wow. That's a nice checkmate. That's a That is a nice checkmate. Wow. Okay. Okay. So it wants this, and then I guess you're going to play like queen d7. Let's see what's the best move here for white. D3. Oh, I was expecting queen d7. It wants knight f6. What's wrong with this move? What's wrong with the Oh, because you can't actually take this or he takes here. I see. I see. So it says knight f6. I guess white captures. Oh, really? You allow the queen trade. And you, you still have a checkmate if white ever tries to take you. They have to do something like this. And then you play h4. Yeah, because I was going to calculate all of this in a 10-minute game. All right. Anyway, we did that. Didn't like h5 now. It wanted it the, okay, it wanted queen d7 now. So, all right, it was a tough game to play. That's why the accuracy was so low. It, it was a very tough game to play. Even though I wasn't playing the best moves, my position is still, you know, obviously much better. 
to f6. Okay, we captured that. It wanted h4 right away there. Interesting. But now... Oh, if white would have played d3, then they leave the queen to defend. Interesting, but they didn't do that. So here we go. Oh, and I could have just taken that? What? What? Oof. Yeah, very nice. All right. Hey, we had a brilliant move. Yeah, here it would have been interesting if our opponent did this. It would have been interesting. Because what I was going to do is probably just take this and go into this position. But yeah, the game was going to still go on because white was going to be able to develop and get these pieces into the game. I was basically saying, though, white's king is not safe. I have a whole bunch of pawns and rooks. I can just do something like this and shove these pawns forward. That was essentially going to be my plan. Um, but it would have been interesting to see that play out. Anyway, the moral of the story is, whenever you play the opening like this, and you create all of these weaknesses along the same color, you got to be really careful. Otherwise, exactly what happened in the game can happen, right? All of a sudden, there's, there's just problems for white. And you can really see the power of en passant, right? So, anyway. All right, guys. We did it. 1650. I'm going to go get ready for bed. Thank you, guys. And um, see you next time, I guess. Neon Joe, thank you. You too. Yeah, happy Labor Day to you guys too. Enjoy the, the day off. Thanks, Noah. Next stream when? Uh, maybe tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow, if I'm feeling okay. Thanks, Adam. All right, guys. See ya. Have a good night.